Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of AI in the Enterprise. And we will together take on a topic I know is top of mind for many of you, and that that's the topic of data. And data is a first class citizen in most enterprise architectures now, and the data economy is in a role. So we're going to unpeel that. And to do that, I've got our guest I know you will enjoy meeting and speaking with, and that's Arvinder Singh. Arvinder, welcome. Thanks, Sanjay. Nice to be here. Thank you for joining, Arvinder. I know you're in Silicon Valley. You're probably joining from your home environment. Welcome. Thank you. And I want to turn back to our audiences, let them know that Arvinder is CEO of Enquero. Enquero is a company that focuses, strategizes, and, and delivers data strategy and data implementations for large corporations. And, uh, and obviously, as a result of that, um, uh, Arvinder and his team are knee-deep, fingers dirty, down into the into the crux of working on data. And so I'd love to bring that perspective in. But before we do that, look, I think the, the broad themes are very simple and we've all talked about it. The fact is data is, uh, is a first class citizen. The ability to harvest the data and unlock the benefits is now the significant sort of driver of competitive differentiation. And being able to do that makes a difference between winning and losing. And it's really important on all corporate IT agendas. But, but, it still takes a lot to get it right. It still is challenging. And I wanna draw upon the working experience, you know, on the ground experience of you and your team or vendor to talk to us about where are the opportunities and where are the challenges. And to do that, I've asked you to tell us about three things at top of mind. Tell us the first thing that's really important to get right about data. So the first thing Sanjay, which comes to, you know, the mind is that how connected is your data ecosystem? Rather than calling the business intelligence, the business intelligence of the past, it is today called the connected intelligence. What I mean by connected intelligence is that, is your data connected? Is, are your models connected? Are your insights connected? What it leads to is connected decisions. The decisions between the marketing, sales, supply chain, and customer support all are intertwined and we need to connect them. We need to make sure that the data is providing that insight to us for actionable, AI actionable uh, decision making. The second is, are, are we having the data on the hands of the real consumers? Is this consumable? Is it contextualized enough for people to take it up, make the right decisions and actions from there? For data to be consumable, it's very important to create trust within the data. That's the third element of it. How good is the quality of the data? How the quality of the data decides the quality of the insight. So to me, these are the three things, the connected data, the consumable data, and the trust in the data. Let's talk about the first one, connected data, such an important concept and yet elusive and difficult to get. I think what you're saying is it's a connected economy and no company operates as an island. Within a company, we've got sort of the historical view of running operations, which are silos in many ways. And so data specific to those functions. <laughs> Increasingly, we now need to take a combined, collaborative, connected view of the entire enterprise. And in so doing, we need to pull the data from all the different components and bring it together in a way that it can drive a much larger purpose. Easy as it sound, sounds, it's hard to do. Why is it so hard? Let me take a couple of examples, Sanjay, to describe this better, right? You know, in the high-tech industry here in Silicon Valley, there are products being launched on daily basis, regular basis, you know, the new innovations are happening all the time. And right. look, at, look at the signals we can get, the digital signals or some of the human signals we can get from the data. Let's take a case of customer support, the technical support, all these, you know, um, OEMs have it here. How this can be useful to the marketing engine in the front end of, you know, the function. If we are seeing higher adoption of products and the services, that leads to give us that this product has a higher demand in the market. And hence the marketing campaigns can be designed and, and, and oriented around that. Let's take another example, very similar to how some of the lagging indicators can be the leading indicators, you know, while we connect the data together. L look, at, look at the cost of the supply chain in today's world, which is becoming very prevalent. The supply chain of today is also going to dictate the sales of tomorrow because what we supply today is going to be getting service tomorrow. You know, that is how some of the lagging indicators of the past are truly becoming the leading indicators through connecting the data ecosystem. And once these insights are on our hands, we're going to truly win. 
That's a, that's a great way to frame what I think is uh, an approach to a traditional problem. Uh, and I love, the, I love the example that you brought out in the high-tech industry of how the uh, evolution from the type of products that are being offered and, uh, and the, 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 the data enabled insights that allow you to actually segment and plan and target and, and drive revenue and consumption up. I think that's a great example. So, so I'll pick your second example. It sounds like high velocity supply chains um, really could benefit from uh, better leverage of the data that's around it. But you also talked about trust and supply chains is mostly around not just one company, but multiple uh, companies in an ecosystem and trust I'd imagine is even more important than that. How do you make that happen? Absolutely, you know, the trust is one of the key, key ingredients we all need, you know. The trust is from establishing the point of origination of the data to the point of consumption of the data. If I can audit all the steps the data hops through, what transformation it is going through, and I have a lineage established through that, whether it's a graph or any other way, then I can pinpoint through the probes, very similar to M MRI, that, hey, this is where the actual data got messed up and hence I cannot trust the insight provided from the data. That's how the trust is established. Now we have the right technology, the engines, which can get us at a supersonic speed and, and ensure that the data is trustworthy. Oh, that's an amazing insight. So you're really saying that, listen, having the breadcrumbing, the ability to double click and track down to where, what piece of data came through and having this lineage put together in a way that you can address it is the key to solving for the trust problem. Um, and, and that's a great way to think about it. Absolutely. And, 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 and this is becoming an absolute need of every single, you know, chief data officer and CIO's need today that can I rely on the data which we have. I can imagine that. That's such an important component. All right, let me just pick your last one and just maybe have you double click a little bit around consumption and consumability and talk to us a little bit more about what's the big deal? I mean, data is data is data. So what's this bit? Why is that relevant? The data consumption is a function of how contextualized your data availability is. The persona plays a significant role in that. If I'm a seller, I would like a recommendation coming my way that what's so relevant to my customer Am I meeting the person in the right way? Am I doing the right kind of insight for pitching the products and the services which the customer is looking for? Am I right priced? And it is becoming such a big deal now that the data has to be personalized. It has to be persona centric. It has to be context centric. And once you start doing these things, start addressing these problems, it becomes consumable. That's easy, but it's, it's something to be done. I love that because I think what you really said in nice and kind words is Sanjay, data is not data is not data is not data. Actually data becomes, comes to life when it is contextualized, when it has this persona that you called out, when it has the nuances of the domain and the industry and the processes within which it's being uh, utilized and, and, and sought out. And without that, it is just plain data. But with that, it's actually contextualized, usable data that you can put to work. I, I love the way you framed it. That was very helpful. Wow, so we've covered trust, we've covered consumability, we've covered this notion of connectedness. And I think you meant both inside the enterprise, but also outside the enterprise in terms of getting all of the data together. Anything else you wanna share with our users around their cloud journeys, uh, that would be top of mind for you and, and they could benefit from. The two things more come to my mind, you know, uh, the, what I say is the value of information. You know, the value of information is that how quickly you can get that information on the hands of the actual consumers. The second is the accuracy of that information. And if we get these two together, right, the time and the accuracy, you know, it solves a bigger problem for all the users and the consumers. So I, I would say that as much as the importance of connectedness, the trust, but it's a time as well, that how quickly we can put it in the hands of the actual consumers. Time to market is such an important thing. And you're so right about that. So uh, uh, that is a really important component. Well, listen, um, in speaking with you, I just get the sense of deep technical passion and all of this experience working on some of the toughest projects out there. But just stepping back from there, getting to know you as a person, here's my last question for you. We just come from a little bit of a holiday period, a little bit of reflection. I'm sure you read a few books. Tell us a book that you could resonate with that related to you. And we'll, we'll try and learn a little bit more about you by the recommendation of the book you give us. 
And the book I love the most during this time, Sanjay, is uh, by Andre Agassi, Open. It talks about the grit, the resilience, the commitment one needs, you know, and there's no better time to read this. Awesome. We're going to take that to heart. I haven't read the book. I'm, going to, I'm sure I'm going to reach out for it. Uh, Arvinda, it's been great having you with us. Thank you for joining. I know our uh, audience might want to ask you a few questions, and if so they'll do it on LinkedIn directly. Thank you for participating, turning to my audience. Thank you for joining us today and see you next time. Thanks, Andrew.